Hi guys, it's Rain, the math person. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to be bombarded with all these new videos, make sure you turn off that notification. Other than that, let's just dive right into this question. In this video, I'll be going over question 108 on SO exam P. So pause the video real quick and try to spam yourself. Okay, as soon as you attempt it, let's just dive right in. So this question is asking x, which is the cost, is equal to 2 times ty plus t2. And we're asked to find the density function of x. We always know that it's easier easier for us to find g of x for a trans transformation because we know that g of x is equal to the probability that big x is less than a little x, where x we know is given by this thing here. So this is equal to the probability of 2t1 plus t2 is less than x, aka when we plug this solve for t2 here, it's going to be t2 is less than x minus 2ty. So then this is equal to t2 exists from 0, right? Because it's this function right here, 0 to x minus 2ty. But let's first figure out what the joint function of ty, t2 is. We know these are independent, so if f of t1 is equal to e to the negative ty, and f of t2 is equal to e to the negative t2, this is just equal to f of t1 times f of t2 by the independence, because it says independence right here. So this is equal to e to the negative t1 times e to the negative t2. So that's our um, f of t1, t2, the joint distribution, e to the negative t1, e to the negative t2. And we're integrating respect to d2 first. And then so what range does the dt1 exist on? This is a little bit trickier. I'm actually going to graph this right here actually to figure out the range. So this is d1 and I'm going to let this be t2. And the function here is x is equal to, so that this is essentially t2 is equal to x minus 2t1. x we don't know what it is, but let's, it's an intercept, it's just a constant here minus 2t1, so that slope is going at a negative 2t here. So at this point right here, this value here is going to be when t2 is equal to 0, right? So this is equal to this here. So then t1 must be equal to x over 2. So this point right here is x over 2, comma 0. So then if we're solving in terms of dt2, so like going this way, Again, the upper limit indeed is this function here, but then what is the dt1 integrated from? It's going from 0 to this point, which is x over 2. Alright, so then now we're ready to just rock and roll. Integrating this in respect to dt2, this is just equal to negative e to the negative t1, e to the negative t2, and you're integrating from 0 to x minus 2t1. This part just stays the same, I'm going to pull it out because it's a constant. Put, plug in the upper limit here, you're going to get e to the negative x plus 2t1 minus this e to the 0 is just 1, so this is what you get. And then keeping the other shell here for dt1, going from 0 to x over 2. So then distributing this term here, and then here, you get negative e to the negative t1 times e to the negative x plus 2t1 minus minus becomes positive e to the negative t1. Okay, so then this term actually, because they have the same base, we can actually add it together. So it becomes negative t e to the negative x plus 2t minus 1. It will just be left with t1 plus e to the negative t1 dt1. Okay, okay, and then we're integrating this from 0 to x over 2. Taking the antiderivative, you get this is just nothing, so it's just, you're just getting the same thing, plus t1 minus e to the negative t1, integrating from 0 to x over 2. The upper limit here, when you plug it in for dt1, you get negative x plus x over 2 minus e to the negative x over 2 minus, when you plug in 0 here for t1, you get negative, negative, so that's positive, e to the negative x. Negative, negative makes a positive here, and e to the 0 is just 1. So this is equal to negative e to the negative x over 2 minus e to the negative x over 2 plus e to the negative x plus 1. So I can put these two numbers together, so you get negative 2 e to the negative x over 2 plus e to the negative x plus 1. And this is actually equal to the CDF, right? Because that's what we were finding, CDF. But we're asked to find the 
probability distribution of g of x, which is just equal to the derivative of g of x, the big G. So when you take the antiderivative, I mean, when you take, so when you take the derivative, you get negative negative makes a positive e to the negative x over two minus e to the negative x. And this derivative is just constant, so this is what you're left with, which is our answer A. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!